Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hope the uh, sharing is visible. Yes, sir, visible, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gopinath, and uh, I'm here part of the um, cybersecurity team at CLAC Bangalore, and I work on uh, DNS security and uh, uh, malicious domain detection and malware activities. Okay, so uh, the, in this session, we'll be covering uh, partially on uh, malware prevention, detection, and anal analysis. Okay, and then we'll be uh, discussing on one of our recent work which we are doing, which is the malicious domain uh, detection. Uh, and then we'll have a look at uh, the Android uh, security part of it. Okay, right. So, uh, uh, so this this session briefly will cover on uh, malware uh, concepts and. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, this is the outline of the session we'll be covering. We'll try to understand what is malware and why do malwares crop up and uh, we'll try to understand the harmful effects of malware. Uh, how does malware spread? What are the means? Who are the carriers of malware? Uh, we'll try to understand the memory layout because malware is something which uh, executes on the end terminal. So malware has to load itself uh, on the uh, end terminal in its uh, RAM in order to execute itself uh, and uh, do the malicious activities which that software wants to perform. So we'll try to understand the memory layout. Uh, and then we'll uh, look at the popular types of malware. What are the popular types of mal malware, the carriers of malware? And then uh, uh, how does a malware creator uh, create an exploit plan. Okay, what is the plan that he executes in order to create a malware and implant it and execute that malware? Who are the malware creators? What type, how many types of malware creators are there? And uh, techniques for malware detection and analysis, right? So uh, this uh, widely used techniques uh, for in the area of research for malware detection and analysis. Uh, all the terminologies, uh, which is the taxonomy of malware detection and anal analysis, and a few case studies, uh, which popular malware attacks which had uh, happened in the past, uh, they'll be discussed, and the dimensions of research in the malware, what are the open areas for research in malware. And uh, this is our present work, malicious domain detection, uh, which is a malware prevention mechanism, and uh, then uh, um, actually a tool, uh, free tool, which I will just uh, show a screenshot of that, and uh, and then we'll move on to the Android security. So, uh, trying to understand what is malware. Malware is nothing but uh, it's a malicious software. The word malware is phrased using the first three letters from the uh, malicious and last four letters from the software. So, malware is nothing but it's a malicious software. Okay, right. So, malicious software meaning. Uh, a software is malicious uh, in two cases. Uh, one, one meaning the software itself is malicious, meaning the software is created to perform malicious operations, number one. Uh, number two is that uh, the software uh, is malicious because uh, it performs a usual activity, but without the required authorization it is performing, performing that activity. For example, now I want to transfer a file from my machine to another, another machine, right? Which I do. I, I, as a user of that machine, perform that file transfer. Uh, then it's a proper activity, genuine activity. Whereas the same thing is performed on my machine without my concern by some other program, right? So that also is a malicious software. Uh, because it, it is happening without my concern, right? So, uh, so a, a malicious activity which is happening without the concern of the user or which is not supposed to be executed at that you know, particular event of time, uh, but it happens is also a malicious software, right? So uh, sometimes the software itself is malicious and some, sometimes it acti the activity is malicious. The software actually is not malicious. The, uh, technically speaking, a file transfer is allowed, right? But it, it is happening without the concern of the user who is who is supposed to do the file transfer. So, 
so that becomes a malicious activity. So that, that is also a malware, right? Uh, so malware basically has two components. Uh, one is the exploit, the other is the payload, okay, right? So uh, payload uh, is nothing but the uh, part which the software which carries the malware to its destination, implanting um, uh, implanting something on the destination is what is the payload, right? And exploit is executing the operation, the uh, taking advantage of the um, resource and executing itself, okay, to uh, to cause uh, some loss to the system. And that is what is exploit. So there are uh, basically two parts in a militia, uh, malware. One is how does the malware reach the destination? And second is how does it execute itself? So that is what is uh, the payload and the exploit. And so why malware? Uh, we know uh, these points. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think we need not go into the much details of it. Of it. Uh, it's a money industry, okay? Malware are created for uh, earning money, there is a separate industry which performs that to fame or defame a group of people, okay, or or other state. We have cyber warfare happening nowadays in which uh, a, a country wants to defame the other country by um, uh, exploiting the resources, internet resources or um, websites of those by implanting malwares in them. Uh, so, and it's a destruction, it's a financial loss, sometimes it's an infrastructure loss, some, sometime, uh, of course, time loss and money loss. Uh, and uh, uh, Quick Heal, an Indian antiviral company, which came up with the statistics in the uh, first quarter of 2019, saying that there are about 3,000 malwares uh, detected per minute. Okay, so uh, there are about 3,000 malwares detected per minute. Of course, uh, uh, to if we consider today, it will be definitely closer to the same number. And so um, now the question arises is that if there are 3000 malware created every minute, uh, meaning that some or other malicious activity is happening in the machine, in, in all the machines which are connected to the internet. Yeah, but of these 3000, all don't create the exact impact which they are supposed to create. Because uh, a malware which is created has to uh, travel itself and get across several hurdles which come, at, come in its way, right? Right. Uh, so like uh, a, a malware created for uh, a Windows operating system will not work on an Android uh, mobile, right? Uh, and uh, a malware created to be implanted uh, in a school server, uh, which is not much secure, uh, the same malware cannot be implanted in a corporate server because you, you can't be reaching that corporate server whereas school servers are still in the basic level of securities, right? So, so every malware doesn't uh, reach its target what it is supposed to do. That's why every every minute we have 3,000 malwares, but not all, all mal malwares create the impact that they are created for. Uh, but of course, few make really big headlines anyway. Uh, so the harmful effects of um, malware, and this also we'll just brief through, like. Uh, we have uh, hamper availability of a service, meaning uh, let's say that uh, we have, uh, it's, it's a business rivalry world and uh, one of the, let's say shopping portal one uh, wants to bring down the uh, services of shopping portal two at some point of time so that the business of shopping portal one can go up. Uh, then uh, shopping portal one will perform a DOS or DDoS operation uh, on the shopping portal two so that uh, the uh, shopping portal two gets busy in cat, uh, listening to um, uh, malicious requests instead of, instead of responding to genuine and uh, benign requests, right? So we can hamper uh, the availability of a service using malware. I mean, of course, botnets are used for that. Uh, and uh, compromise privacy, which is very much essential nowadays. Uh, we have, uh, uh, everyone carries a mobile device. And in the mobile device, we have all our social media apps. We have all our financial apps in the mobile device. In the same device, we carry all those things. And any loss of data is, of course, a compromise of privacy and may result in uh, financial losses also. Um, undesirable results of a software. Okay, right. So, uh, meaning a software is supposed to execute in a certain way, but 
the, can, the malware can modify the execution of the software and result in something else. Uh, the result, it can change the result. Okay, a malware will result in a financial or infrastructure loss. A malware can, can also be created for prank, right? We usually beginners in malware creators usually do that. And it can impact any industry. There is no industry which can escape if, if it is coming under a malware attack, right? If a genuine malware, if a really powerful malware is created, any industry can affect it because everything is digitized nowadays and is present connected to the internet. Spreading of malware. Uh, there are two primary mechanisms by which a malware spread. One is through the websites and the other is through the emails. Um, in the corporate environment, through the websites and the emails, right? And in common common public environment, we also have the physical media um, transmission also of malware, right? Uh, like uh, you you have USB drives or external hard drives, uh, so all those can be carriers of malware, uh, physical media. And websites have links. There are some compromised websites. Um, emails will definitely have attachments. We don't know what type of attachment is coming in an email. Email also contain links. Uh, we don't know this. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to say, authenticate the um, sender of the email. Uh, and some, sometimes it's uh, difficult to authenticate, uh, identify the link which is present in that because in many, many cases it is also a tiny URL. Right nowadays we also have received URLs in WhatsApps and SMS in mobile phones. Right, so uh, this is another factor of risk. And uh, uh, physical media, we have, of course, uh, USB drives and uh, external hard drives, uh, which can also be transmitted. We, um, uh, we can, uh, 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 we do scan, uh, we do have antiviral scans for storage devices, but uh, all the antiviral scanners based uh, work based on uh, signatures and many, many of the um, systems in the internet are not having uh, genuine or uh, proper antiviral scanning softwares, right? And they may be outdated or they may be pirated. All these problems are there. Uh, software download, right? Software download and file sharing are really tricky. Uh, it is difficult to find out that. We download many PDF documents from internet. Uh, we download many music files from internet, right? There are many music files available in the internet and uh, uh, we download those music files and we download uh, PDF documents from the internet. And uh, um, so these files, music files, MP3 files or uh, MP4 files and uh, um, and uh, PDF documents or Excel documents or doc files which are downloaded from the internet can carry a malware in them. Okay, They have a feature called as macros. Uh, macros are supposed to be facilitating uh, plugin development uh, for uh, um, uh, PPT, um, Microsoft PPT, or uh, Excel, or doc files, and uh, macros are also present in um, uh, PDF uh, readers. Uh, where, uh, where, uh, where in in PDF we have the facility of highlighting text, adding comment to a text in PDF. Right, all these are implemented as macros in those softwares. So those macros can carry. Uh, malware or can have small scripts which execute along with the PDF reader or uh, doc file, um, Microsoft doc, uh, Microsoft Word, uh, and connect to a remote system and download a um, and download a malware to our machine. You can uh, create a backdoor and download a malware. Okay, right. So all these things are possible. So. Uh, but primarily in the corporate environment, emails and websites are the most uh, used uh, points of uh, uh, malware penetration. Uh, and uh, in general, common man's life uh, outside the corporate world, physical media can be a um, uh, medium. And software download and file sharing can also be done. Okay, right. So uh, coming to um, memory layout, right? So this is uh, understanding. This is important because uh, a malware actually is on the application layer of the OSI model of the networks, right? Uh, computer networks, right? So uh, it's in the topmost layer. It's in the application layer. 
so uh, malware works only when it is delivered to the end terminal and executed on that end, end terminal right so when it is delivered to that end ter terminal and it executes it has to occupy some space on that machine to execute itself and that space it occupies on the ram right so this is the primary space where the malware will execute itself okay it will execute itself in the stack with the help of some heap memory right so the stack grows like this and heap grows like this till they meet right so uh, so basically there are many um, uh, operating system vulnerabilities and many programming language vulnerabilities like uh, buffer overflow uh, heap overflow um, dangling pointers memory leak um, address uh, space allocation right all these are vulner programming vulnerabilities and um, operating system vulnerabilities which the malware exploits and it loads itself onto this stack at certain point and ensures execution of that program on the machine okay right so uh, the machine as such is not aware what it is loading but it is a malware program because uh, the meaning there is no way the machine can identify that right uh, so this is this is the primary area where the um, program will load itself and apart from this these are areas which are untouched by external programs external programs can't be touching this only the native operating system can be working on these areas okay this the top command line arguments area and this area are meant for the operating system the others can't uh, get into it unless and until the malware exploits a vulnerability of the operating system in order to enter these areas which is uh, nowadays a very rare case not much of it but primarily it occupies this stack and execute itself okay right so uh, so basically it, it's like um, it's not that malware is just coming and executing it is using our machine's resource to execute it right okay so uh, popular types of malware uh, these are popular types of malware uh, like we have a, a virus we commonly call uh, a malware as virus Mal malware is a technical terminology and it has so many types of it and virus is one type among them uh, so uh, virus infects a program okay right uh, let's say that uh, i have a, a word file okay and i have uh, written a, a macro in that uh, i have an excel file and i have written a macro in that and that macro modifies the arithmetic any arithmetic operation performed uh, in that excel sheet okay so so it's a virus right so i may be performing 2 plus 3 uh, in that excel sheet uh, right the result result is supposed to be 5 whereas 2 plus 3 may be given as 1 uh, when i use that uh, macro uh, in that uh, built into that excel file right so uh, a, a virus basically infects a program so in this case i am infecting the uh, excel uh, microsoft excel program by writing a macro which gives a faulty result for a arithmetic operation right so uh, so virus is one which which executes uh, which uh, execute uh, executes itself along with the program by infecting that program mm, worm worm is nothing but it crawls through a network spreading infection right it it it, it has the capability of uh, replicating itself by moving from one machine to other machine in a network right so so basically it can be used as a carrier let's say that machine a is infected with a virus uh, and there is a worm present in that machine A, that machine, that worm can carry virus from one machine to the other machine and install it there, execute it there, right? So worm is, worm is uh, again a malware which is capable of spreading infection from one machine to other machine. It itself can also execute a lot of malicious activities. Uh, Trojan horse. Uh, Trojan is nothing but uh, uh, in as we have heard the story of uh, the Battle of Troy, uh, where uh, they left a wooden horse as a um, uh, victory gift uh, to the winners of the Battle of Troy. Uh, whereas in the night they were 
hiding inside the wooden horse and they came out and uh, they attacked the whole kingdom and occupied it right conquered it uh, so trojan is nothing but uh, let's say that you download uh, a music player vlc player you download from the internet uh, that vlc player is supposed to uh, install the vlc player on your machine whereas that vlc player is also installing another malware uh, on your machine at the same time while installing the vlc player so as a user we are only we only see that the vlc player is installed and it's working whereas in the background the same exe file has installed another malware and is executing the background which is not known to us right so that 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 is what the trojan okay so we have a genuine software and that genuine software comes bundled with uh, some other third party software and this happens usually when we download an uh, installer from a third party website, uh, a website which is not actually called Captain Dead Service. If we are downloading a VLC player, we need to download from the VLC player website. Uh, we should avoid downloading from some other person who is downloading the VLC player and hosting for others to use it. Okay, so it may be rebundled with a malware. Okay, they would have downloaded the VLC player, rebundled with a malware packed into that VLC player and given okay so we should avoid downloading from third party um, uh, websites any software we should directly go to the software website which is catering which is which who is the developer of that software or can uh, providing that software uh, genuine source and download from there okay so, and uh, we have the backdoor uh, uh, command and control okay, right so uh, it's 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 usually use uh, backdoor and uh, botnets usually come tied up with each other right so uh, there is a remote remote server uh, backdoor botnets and rootkit also come tied up with together okay right so uh, it, it establishes a backdoor uh, with a remote server and that remote server issues command to the client terminal and executes itself okay right so meaning now i have uh, a rootkit in by some means and uh, it means that when i have administrative privilege i need not transfer a file from i need not find a means to transfer a file from some remote machine to the uh, victim machine uh, the command terminal itself in the command terminal i can simply uh, uh, type a few small commands couple of commands and execute my operations right so that is what is the backdoor so it's uh, the Bandwidth is not going to be used here, whereas it's just few text messages which is going to get transmitted uh, from the remote uh, uh, control server onto the client machine and it is going to execute itself. Adware advertisements, we have many apps in installed on our mobiles and whenever we launch our mobiles, the ads pop up uh, in that, right? Not only in the mobiles, but also in the browsers, right? We never ask for those ads, but those ads uh, pop up okay right so these are adwares uh, botnets uh, botnets as we know uh, it's a, uh, it's a cluster of machines controlled by a single machine in order to and those cl cl uh, cluster of machines are the soldiers which perform malicious activity on behalf of the uh, server which is commanding those cluster of machines mm, so those are botnets uh, ransomware ransomware has been uh, increasing in the recent past uh, because uh, a lot of uh, bitcoins have been introduced in many of the countries uh, in the, across the globe and uh, by that ransomware uh, uh, has uh, has been uh, man because of the ransomware has been increasing to a la large extent ransomware is nothing but it usually uh, encrypts uh, it it uh, implants itself on the uh, victim machine and it reads the file system encrypts the file system using uh, uh, asymmetric uh, encryption uh, technique and uh, it uh, deletes the uh, normal file system so the file system files which are present in the machine are in the uh, encrypted format and uh, they cannot be uh, accessed by the user himself owner of the uh, machine himself because they are being encrypted with asymmetric encryption technique okay right so so now 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 having done the encryption the 
um, hacker or the uh, malware uh, creator demands ransom from the uh, end user uh, in terms of the uh, in the form of bitcoins uh, and claims that he will give the uh, encryption decryption key uh, in order to decrypt the files uh, file system okay right so that is the reason ransomware uh, spyware like key logging or online behavior are captured usually we uh, visit few website like we visit some shopping portal and then we go back to another website to read a blog the item which we had a look in the shopping portal will be visible as an advertisement on the uh, on the uh, blog which we are reading right so someone is spying our not online activities and uh, producing that right uh, the other a uh, dangerous uh, spyware can be the key logging where uh, the uh, the key strokes that we uh, make are captured right so this can be dangerous one because they can steal our credentials using this right using the spyware uh, browser hijacker uh, um, browser hijacker is nothing but uh, uh, javascript proteins uh, as such they are not harmful but in fact they are using our computing resources in order to perform crypto mining operations for the uh, bitcoins uh, bitcoin industry right so they are browser hijackers so many and there are uh, popular websites which uh, which embed uh, crypto mining javascript into their websites so when we visit those websites uh, the browser the browser will be executing the javascript which will be a crypto miner uh, javascript and it will be executing the background in the browser's space uh, without affecting the other um, pro pro programs which are running on the machine. So as such, it's not difficult, but it's, it's just that it is uh, capitalizing on the uh, computing resources of our machine to execute certain crypto mining algorithms. Right? Okay. Um, so a popular carriers of malware. Uh, so these are the popular carriers of malware. Uh, self extracting files zip files uh, python scripts uh, uh, pdf J javascript java archive files html html pages containing links exe files doc files document files dll files and bat files uh, so these are the popular carriers of malware of these the most used are uh, excel is missing here uh, microsoft excel excel file is missing here uh, PDF, doc, and Excel are the most used files as uh, email attachments or downloads in order to um, uh, for the propagation of malware. Okay, right. So uh, uh, files, zip files are also used. SFX, uh, zip files, um, PDF, doc, and Excel are the primary sources through which uh, the malwares are transmitted and shared across okay right mm, so uh, so these are the popular carriers of malware okay uh, stages of malware exploit plan mm, so so um, uh, a malware creator usually follows a routine in order to um, perform a malware attack and uh, uh, this Roughly, are the these briefly are the stages of uh, malware um, exploit plan. Okay, the initial uh, so stage is the survey stage. Okay, where uh, where the malware creator uh, selects uh, uh, identifies uh, the um, place, uh, the type of network infrastructure present, uh, the type of machines present, the type of operating system used the type of software is used, uh, the type of uh, um, social behavior of people in a certain environment, uh, all these are considered in the survey. Uh, and considering those factors, weapons are created, okay, specific weapons, like uh, uh, considering the social behavior, if there is excessive uses, usage of uh, social media websites in certain um, uh, infrastructure in certain corporate culture, then the uh, social media website will be used as a weapon to um, uh, to target uh, the 
end user, right? Uh, so uh, let, let's say that some uh, some website is at abc.com. Uh, the same abc.com will be replicated as acb.com, and that can be used as a weapon. Okay, the, it's it's called typo squatting, where the uh, the name alone is uh, slightly uh, modified with uh, uh, with spelling uh, and which will be overlooked by the end user, uh, and uh, they may visit that website. Okay, right. Uh, and uh, so initial activity first stage is the survey in the survey they try to understand the network uh, of the place uh, all the machines the operating systems uh, the type of software they use the type of people the type of uh, email system they have all these are studied here and uh, they try to find out the weak points in that and weaponize themselves to uh, exploit those uh, weak points and they target them okay and then they start targeting and then they try to deliver the malware onto the uh, target uh, victims targeted victims and they install the malware onto those terminals and uh, once they install uh, they exploit the environment and again they modify it execute the attack exploit modify execute the attack exploit modify execute the attack till they are either um, done with the exploitation or uh, till they are um, uh, till they are um, satisfied with the exploitation which they have done okay right uh, so so this this stage goes on the five six stage is repeated again and again okay so we, the preparation stage is these these two stages and this is very primary and once once a malware succeeds this stage the remaining will mostly happen uh, quite easily right so they need to intrude they need to implant it and execute it that is what remains so this is the general plan which is executed by any of the uh, malware creators followed by any of the malware creators Okay, uh, so who are the malware creators? Uh, so uh, there are a few naive malware creators who come up with self-conceptualized self, uh, self ideas. They are not much aware of the ground realities or the ground state of art is not much known to them. So they come up with their own ideas, small ideas, and mostly uh, naive uh, malware creators end up creating prank malwares or so. Right, but there is other category of uh, malware creators who are very sophisticated malware creators, and uh, they are aware of the state of art, and uh, they are uh, aware of the uh, complete internet system and the ecosystem, and uh, they uh, they know how to identify, look for vulnerabilities, identify vulnerabilities, and weaponize themselves in order to exploit them. Okay, right. So they are sophisticated malware creators uh and uh, there are uh, here uh, okay uh, these sophisticated malware creators many times have a look at uh, this this list of vulnerabilities which is uh, present on the internet uh, common vulnerabilities exposure uh, there is a, a, a body uh, international body by name mitre uh, which is uh, um, international body present in US and it is formed by uh, several organizations collaboratively, uh, non-profit organization Mitre, and they, ex uh, they publish a common vulnerabilities exposure, right? So let's see this. Um, Right, so this is the uh, list. Okay, so the, uh, there are several uh, several vulnerabilities which are listed in this. Okay, right. So any any vulnerability that you want to um, uh, check whether it's present or not is is present will be published in this by this organization Mitre. Right. So uh, they they are doing this for uh, uh, for the social cost so that. Uh, the people get to understand the vulnerabilities and try to fix them. 
but these sophisticated malware creators pick the vulnerabilities from those places and uh, create specific malwares to uh, exploit those vulnerabilities right uh, so here are two examples um, uh, of two popular attacks which happened in the past uh, one is the uh, stuxnet attack uh, on the iran's uh, nuclear power plant okay uh, and uh, the other is the WannaCry attack, WannaCry ransomware attack, uh, which is, uh, I think there is there is a question. Okay, uh, right. Uh, there's a question on uh, how uh, executable is embedded in a file PDF and how does it exec uh, exploit a system. Uh, there, there uh, as, as I uh, said earlier, there is uh, something called as uh, um, macros present in uh, PDF. Okay, right. So we have like, uh, we have utilities like um, uh, highlighting a text or uh, adding comment uh to a uh, text in pdf uh, uh these these features are actually implemented as macros uh in uh, pdf readers and uh, similarly we have in excel and word documents also so we have macro features uh, and those macros are, are actually um features which uh, uh, help plug in a functionality into a pdf reader or a pdf editor or whatever right so so these are actually plugin functionality. So we can, uh, like we have browser plugins. So similarly, we have those plugins which can be plugged into uh, a PDF reader or so. And so we can write some code uh, which will be present in that, which can be added as a macro into those uh, PDF documents. And when the PDF document is opened, it executes itself in the background as a macro. So that that is the case, and it is difficult to detect because each it can be a few lines of script which is connecting to a remote machine and executing some uh, inter interaction. A backdoor may be established, uh, and uh, so it's it's not going to be a heavy activity which that performs. So it's difficult to detect by antivirus solutions. Signatures may also be may not be present also in the antivirus softwares to detect this. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, is PDF reader having vulnerabilities? Yes, PDF readers. Uh, any any software has vulnerability. Uh, we are now having a presentation, and uh, that there, there can be some vulnerability. Of course, we can go to this mitre dot uh, uh, cve dot mitre dot org website and search uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, it it will be having some other vulnerability. There are vulnerabilities uh, in present in uh, every software, but how we exploit, how one can exploit that is another technical challenge to come up with. A few are easily explo exploitable, whereas others are, aren't much ex easily exploitable. Um, so, so for that matter, um, in any software uh, that we consider uh, is implemented using programming languages, right? Uh, programming languages themselves have plenty of vulnerabilities uh, with them, right? So we have programming languages like if you, if you look for uh, Java programming language and, and in the cv.mitra.org, you type Java, uh, it uh, it'll uh, it'll pull out a big list of vulnerabilities which are found in Java programming languages. So uh, so the, the, they are also to be fixed. So there are, I mean, as far as I'm aware, I'm aware there are no softwares or no uh, um, uh, technology which is not having vulnerabilities. They are, um, there are vulnerability presence, uh, present in every software, some or other. Okay, uh, so uh, stuck, Stuxnet attacks, um, uh, so uh, attack happened on uh, Iran's nuclear power plant. Actually, uh, the, the, the attack was coined in such a way that uh, uh, that that the, the nuclear power plant in the in Iran had uh, a microcontroller uh, which was actually um, 
marketed by Siemens US. Okay, Siemens had provided that microcontroller to the uh, Iran's nuclear power plant, and that microcontroller was uh, the command system uh, for a turbine for the turbines which are running in the nuclear power plant. Uh, uh, and so, in certain places, in that microcontroller's uh, C programming implementation, a uh, few hard-coded values were used. A uh, few credentials, um, credentials, and the uh, turbine operation instructions were um, uh, hard coded in that program. Uh, so uh, these, uh, uh, having known this, uh, the uh, it was a state-sponsored attack, uh, and uh, a, 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 a pen drive with uh, uh, a different value was loaded for that program and it was implanted into that microcontroller in the nuclear power plant iran's nuclear power plant and when those values over uh, wrote the values uh, which were present in the microcontroller uh, it was done in such a way that the turbine started running in a high higher speed which is which it is not supposed to run with and the a whole nuclear power plant collapsed. Uh, so, so it it is it is that they exploited the vulnerability uh, hard coded values present in the uh, uh, system, my um, microcontroller system, and uh, they uh, performed this attack. Okay, as in a simple hard coded value was modified. So it was as as simple as that. But the impact was big because the whole nuclear power plant came down okay uh, right so this this is the cve number common vulnerabilities exposure number uh, we can uh, look at these vulnerabilities uh, and uh, um, and uh, and uh, understand the exploitation which was done similarly we had the wannacry ransomware attack in the year 2017 and uh, uh, there is another use uh, case study which I'll present. So this WannaCry um, uh, was a ransomware which was circulated by a hidden Cobra team of the North Korea, and uh, they had uh, performed this attack in the past. Uh, and uh, the, the the same hidden Cobra North Korean team had been involved in another attack which has been happening since 2010 and. Uh, uh, late till 2016, they had been attacking several financial institutions, and uh, a media company in US uh, was also attacked uh, using uh, these uh, hidden Cobra teams. And they exploited these listed vulnerabilities in order to carry out those attacks. So these these uh, vulnerabilities were listed only after that attack was uh, discovered and uh, investigated. So this was documented after that. All right. Um, techniques for malware analysis and detection. Uh, uh, this uh, the primary technique is signature based technique. Okay, right. Signature based technique is nothing but uh, we have uh, a print footprint for uh, a file itself. We can have a footprint for uh, footprint meaning a signature. Um, uh, rather, I'm I'm sorry to use the wrong word. It's a, it's called as a fingerprint. Uh, so fingerprint for a set of instructions uh, of a file and if those set of instructions are present in some other file then it's called a signature match and it is malicious right so so ideally uh, uh, we saw here in this case that uh, the program loads uh, itself onto this stack and executes right and the uh, form of the program which is loaded onto this stack is the machine instructions which is going to be loaded. The program may be written in some other language. It may be written in C, it can, it may be, it can be written in Scala, or it can be written in some other Java or Python or anything, or PHP or anything. But, uh, but ultimately, uh, that programming language's implementation uh, has to be translated into machine instructions and loaded onto this stack in order to execute itself, right? So when we execute those machine instructions, uh, that is the place where the signature is matched. Okay, so signature 
of the program is not actually which is being matched. It is the machine instructions uh, which are considered as the signatures, right? Uh, so machine op codes uh, are are derived as signatures uh, from malicious uh, activity performing softwares, and those are put into malware solutions, anti-malware solutions, and a different program having similar machine instructions is classified as a malware by that. Okay, right? Uh, so, malware, uh, techniques of malware analysis and detection is primarily based on signature-based detection because uh, analyzing a program for a malware is a time-consuming uh, time operation and uh, computationally heavy task. So, primary first aid check happens using signature okay signature is the mechanism for determining that that's why antiviral softwares come only with signatures they don't have a static analysis or dynamic analysis capabilities with them uh, so so derive to derive the signatures people also perform static analysis and dynamic analysis uh, and these static analysis and dynamic analysis are nothing but um, uh, research uh, areas for malware analysis and detection okay now what is static analysis uh, static analysis is nothing but um, understand the working of a software without executing that software. Okay, it is it is not actually executed. The software actually stays as a file. Uh, suppose I have an exe file. I keep that file as an exe file and run a static analysis on that file to understand what is inside that exe file. Okay, right. So that is static analysis. Uh, whereas dynamic analysis is a restricted environment, a sandboxed environment or a, a virtual machine environment in which I execute that exe. I click on that exe and execute that exe and try to understand what that uh, exe performs uh, uh, or how does it perform. Okay, right. So, so it is actually related to um mostly the memory imprint right so uh, so the dynamic analysis tools capture a snapshot of the memory heap and stack before we execute that exe and once we start that exe execution of that software or the exe in that restricted environment it takes repeated snapshots of the memory and compares with the all previous snapshots to try and understand whether it gives any uh, uh, hints of malicious activities or not, right? So basically, it is the comparison of values which are present in that. Okay, for example, uh, I I may have a software uh, which uh, performs uh, a backdoor, but that perform software performs a backdoor three days after it is installed. It is timed in such a way, okay, right? So I install the software on my machine today, uh, and I leave it. Uh, the third day, the software will open a backdoor and start interacting with some other, uh, some other uh, third, uh, third, uh, uh, some, some other, some command and control server in the, in a remote location, right? So to identify that, I'll have to perform dynamic analysis on my software for three days at least, so that uh, I get to understand that this software is trying to establish a connection, look for a connection with some other um, machine, which is not here or not present here, and it is not supposed to perform that action, right? So uh, such things may not be captured in static analysis, like the example of uh, backdoor, which executes itself after three days, right? So, uh, so, so these are two primary techniques of uh, detection of uh, um, malware, the static analysis and the dynamic analysis. Uh, the output results of static analysis and dynamic analysis uh, can be provided to these machine learning algorithms, natural language processing algorithms, uh, or data or text mining algorithms, uh, and the uh, precision can be enhanced. Right, so these are supplementary techniques which can be applied to static and dynamic analysis in order to improve the patient precision of um, malware detection and analysis and reduce the time consumed for that. 
I think like so. Uh, these are the primary techniques. Uh, the taxonomy, uh, complete taxonomy of uh, malware analysis and detection. It is, uh, it is primarily falling under these categories. Static analysis can be used for data mining or code analysis, and dynamic analysis can be used for text mining or code analysis. Right. Uh, so uh, we have this segment of uh, analysis which can be performed using static analysis, and we have this segment of activities which can be performed using dynamic analysis. Uh, I won't go into much details of it. Uh, for example, data flow analysis. Okay, how does the data flow? The registers which uh, which capture the data and where exactly the data is stored, how long the data is stored. Uh, in that all these are captured as data flow analysis. Uh, control flow analysis, what is the execution, sequence of execution of a program? Uh, that can be captured in control, uh, control flow analysis. Points to analysis is uh, the memory pointers, where, where, where the values are stored in the memory and where, where the pointers are uh, heading to, all these are points to analysis. Structural analysis is again related to control flow analysis. It it says uh, it it is a uh, collation of control flow analysis which gives the structure flow analysis. Group of flows are captured together and a structural analysis performed. Uh, API calls many programs have external libraries. Uh, they depend on external libraries for execution, and uh, uh, these uh, uh, these API calls uh, are analyzed in this. Uh, similarly, we have call graphs. Okay, right. Uh, the all the call routines, including data flow analysis, control flow analysis, structural analysis, can be uh, captured in uh, call graph as a, a single entity. Dependency graph. The external softwares or the external calls, um, uh, like third-party libraries, which our software depends on, is the dependency graph. Byte code analysis, which is the machine code analysis itself. Right. Translate the code into bytes. Machine codes and analyze the byte code, and this byte code analysis can also be performed on all these. Using all these can be performed on this byte code. Okay, right. So this these are actually code analysis, and on these byte code analysis we can derive these also because uh, in code analysis the control flow may be different, whereas in the byte code analysis the control flow will be different. Right, both will have a set of different control flows definitely. Right. Uh, similarly, we have dynamic analysis. In this dynamic analysis, we have uh, we can identify the operating system calls that a software makes. Uh, we can determine the de uh, dependency the dynamic dependency graph as the execution progresses, which are the libraries that the program looks for uh, that can be generated. Network activity can be monitored, right? Whether it's making internet calls or it, try, it is interacting with some other machine, trying to do some file transfer. All those things can be identified using network activity and system monitor. Uh, we can monitor the system. Uh, it it uh, whether uh, the program is forking more and more processes. If it is forking more and more processes, of course it's it's not supposed to do that. Uh, so we can investigate that. So all these can be dynamic analysis properties of that. So this is the complete uh, research umbrella of. Uh, uh, malware analysis and detection, and every area is open till date, and it will it will it will remain open till uh, software and technologies and internet is present. Uh, if, if, because we have new technologies coming up, new softwares coming up, uh, new arch software architectures coming up. So uh, improvisations at every stage is required on each factor of this. Okay, um, case study. So, uh, should we go for a break now, uh, Pravesh? Yes, sir. Uh, should we go for a break or shall we continue? Yes, sir. We'll take a break, sir. Of uh, ten minutes, short break. We'll come by four thirty. We'll start, sir. Okay. Uh, right. So four twenty. Yeah, four thirty. We'll start. Yes.